Merry Christmas! Yan, parang ano lang, no? Jose Maricha, pa, pasilip-silip pa. Well, uh, pleasant day to everyone. And let me just be the first one or the first one to greet you. A Merry Christmas! September na po at Christmas na. And uh, alam ko lahat tayo, we are, kahit na may pandemic, hindi niya mapipigilan ang Christmas, ang pag-celebrate natin. Uh, you know, Christmas is one way we celebrate the goodness of our Lord uh, by sending His Son. And, and uh, hindi siya mapapainto ng kahit anong pandemic. With that said, again, greetings to everyone. We are still on our series on generationship. And last week, we started that and, and uh, Paul was here preaching. And I'm really so privileged to be in a spiritual family, in a movement where it values the, the next generation. And ang generationship is a series that really focuses on our value, one of our value, which is the next generation. And although, again, although we are reaching the next generation, we do it in such a way that it's multi-generational leadership ang gumagawa nun. No? We, we get a generationship Kung napansin niya, just like what I said last week, generationship is not a, ano, it's not a dictionary term. It, it's, a, it's a term we coined to describe na we are a, a, a movement that wants the generations to have a relationship, a good working relationship because we have a mission. We have God's purpose that we need to advance and pass on from one generation to Another and that's and thus uh, this um, term called generationship. In fact, when I look around, alam mo guys, mga, mga kasama ko dito, aren't you glad? Listen, listen, mga guys, aren't you glad? You mga kasama ko dito, eto, etong team na to, multi generational team to, grabe. Of course, with me being the youngest. You know, si Ate Wen, si kanina, na uh, si Kuya Paul or Tito Paul, depende sa itsura niya minsan. Uh, si Kim, na uh, si Tito Kim, matanda na rin yan. Uh, lalo na pagka minsan, di siya malak- makalaka, di ko na lang sabihin kung bakit. Kaya pinagtatawa na namin siya ngayon. And of course, my son is behind the camera. I'm in front of it, he's behind it. So, we are so serious about multi-generational leadership and relationship that even itong kahit ilan lang kami dito, we represent the generations. In fact, uh, I just want to make a shout out, no? Shout out ng kay Argem na kahit hindi sila pwede dahil mga bata pa sila, ako nga buti umabot yung age ko. Muntik na ako hindi maka-preach kasi syempre pagka medyo bata ka pa, hindi ka pinapalabas ng government, no? And so, si Argem, naka-video naman. So, I really would like to uh, give a shout out to Argem, one of our next generation leaders. And so, Really, uh, our heart is to see the generations work together. And that's why we have this series titled Generationship. And, and ang pinaka-focus na itong, itong series na Generationship is really not just that we talk about the next generation, but we talk about how the generations could work together. Because kung napapansin nyo, marami masyadong, ito, hindi, this is nothing new. There's so much generation wars at times. No, yung minsan yung present generation, mamaliitin ang next generation. And ako, guilty ako doon. Sometimes I, I talk some uh, bad or I look down on the millennials, yung mga ibang kaulagalian nila. And I'm sure, yung mga millennials, ganun din ang tingin sa amin. Mga dinosaurs, mga, mga maraming di alam, di, hindi kami mga dig- kasi hindi kami digital native eh. Digital immigrants lang kami. So ang dami nating, hindi, hindi digital ignorance ha, digital immigrants. And so, pag Ang dami namin hindi alam. And so, really, if we don't put effort into the relationship between generations, it drifts towards generation gap, generation wars. So what we want to do with this series is to pour in effort and energy so that we could bridge the generations to understand one another. Kahit sa bahay, I take an effort. No, uh, minsan maintindihan si na Nico, si na Nikki, uh, ano yung mga pinagagawa nila. Ang dami kong natutunan sa kanila in terms of terminology, technology, social media, which I am, you know, admittedly ignorant of in so many ways. And I'm glad I am connected with my children who educates me in so many ways. And so, but if we don't put effort in it, and ito lang ah, not just 
the present or the previous generation putting the effort to the next. But sana yung mga next generation, katulad natin, the yung mga younger generation would also put an effort, what? An effort to reach out to the previous and the present generation. Sana, and that's what Paul preached last week. He talked about David and how David, ito pa, buti sana ko yung previous generation ni David, the one that was passing on things to him. Buti sana kung maayos, medyo, medyo challenging yung relationship niya with King Saul. But Paul pointed out that even in the midst of challenging uh, circumstance and even relationally medyo challenging, David served humbly, he humbled himself. And really, tayo mga younger generation, even, and pag sinasabi kong tayo, hindi, hindi sana niloloko ko kayo na younger ako. Kasi lahat naman tayo in between generations. I don't know if you've noticed that. See, I am also accountable to a previous generation who I also relate to. And so while I was listening to Paul last week, and grabe, uh, I have uh, I heard so much uh, good feedback. Alam mo yun, si Paul, uh, ang laki na nang in-improve niyan. And talagang we always give them a platform. Alam ko, minsan sabi niyo, ba't kaya may, naglalagay tayo ng mga bata dyan? At kung yun ang reklamo niyo, dapat magreklamo kayo every week dito sa Pasay kasi napakabata nung nilalagay nila dito every week. Anyway, going back to Paul, uh, I heard so many good feedbacks. And kung alam mo kung saan pinanggalingan ni Paul dati, alam ni Paul yan, tumatawa siya ngayon, no? Talagang we need to work with him and ano and si Paul humble yan. Talagang ah, talaga receive lang ng receive, gusto lang matuto. And then pag binigyan ng opportunity, aakyat dito and sa kaming mga previous generation, we're glad that we're able to give them the opportunity. The same opportunity was that was given to us. Dati ganun din kami, hindi rin kami marunong. Paano ba magsalita sa harap ng yung English, bako bako, pati nga Tagalog, bako bako eh. And so really that that's just our way of valuing the next generation and intergenerational relationship. And so, um, last week, talagang, even me, I was taking notes about how it is important for us to serve humbly, even yung nakakatanda sa atin who went ahead of us. And maybe they will have miscues, and maybe they will have missteps, but nonetheless, we're gracious. We learn from it as well. Alam mo, kahit yung mga missteps ng mga previous generations, yung mga missteps ko, yun ang mga sinasabi ko sa anak ko, uh, learn also from my mistakes. And my children are uh, top uh, front row view of all of my mistakes. No? Pag uh, yung mga sila yung nasa bahay, so nakikita nila kung sino talaga ako. No? And so, hopefully we'll serve humbly. We'll serve faithfully. We'll serve faithfully with what God has given us, our mission, um, serving with the previous generation, and serve honorably. That we are a people who have a culture of honor instead of bashing. Alam mo, mga tao ngayon, ang hilig mang bash. Tao ko nga sa, minsan sa mga tao ngayon, napaka-bashful. Alam ko yung bashful ang ibig sabihin mahiyain. Pero ito, bashful kasi, terminology ko na ngayon kasi, full of bashing. I think there is a place where we could call out people honorably. And I pray na pag-aralan siguro natin yun. And ako, 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 I need that. I also need to study that. I need to be able to, also when I relate to the next generation, not to bash them, but to also in honor and respect help, help, uh, help them uh, and prepare them. And that's the, the, ano ngayon, the message today. If last week, you know, really, Paul did a great job in helping us understand as a, if you, kahit in between generation ka, if you are relating to the previous generation, how do you relate to them if you are seen as the next? Ngayon naman, as the present or previous generation, how do we prepare the next generation? Yun naman. And si David ulit. Ang titingnan natin yung buhay ni David. Ang galing nga eh, si David had a not so good experience with the previous generation who raised him up. But that did not affect him. That did not dictate who he would become. It actually, because of his relationship with God, he was able then to pass on to the next generation na maayos. And so yun yung gusto natin makita. Again, again we will zero in on the life of David. Pero ngayon, it's between David and Solomon. So if you have your Bibles with you, kindly, and sana, no, kahit na nasa bahay kayo, 
I know, yung sopa, ang sarap, no? Kung pwede na, maglalagay din ako ng sopa dito para sabayan kayo. Pero alam ko, masarap yung upuan, pag upo nyo dyan, and minsan, uh, nakikinig lang kayo, and so relaxed, chill. But I would really like us to take this time to get our Bibles. Okay lang ba? Pwede. Kunin nyo yung Bible nyo. Open it to 1 Chronicles chapter 22. And then I want us all to stand up. Para lang, ano talaga tayo, yung we are focused, we are looking at the Word of God, we are reading it. No, we're not distracted. Kasi important yung Word of God. I don't know about you, but the Word of God is very, not just important, but essential. And so I want us to do this. So let us read it together. If you want to read it aloud, that's fine with me. But our text would be found in verses 6 to 19 of chapter 22 of Chronicles. Now, verse 6. Then he called for Solomon his son and charged him to build a house for the Lord, the God of Israel. David said to Solomon, My son, I had it in my heart to build a house to the name of the Lord my God. But the word of the Lord came to me saying, You have shed much blood and have waged great wars. You shall not build a house to my name because you have shed so much blood before me on the earth. Behold, a son shall be born to you who shall be a man of rest. I will give him rest from all his surrounding enemies for his name shall be Solomon. And I will give, him pe- I will give peace and quiet to Israel in his days. He shall build a house for my name. He shall be my son and I will be his father and I will establish his royal throne in Israel forever. Now, my son, the Lord be with you so that you may succeed in building the house of the Lord your God as he has spoken concerning you. Only may the Lord grant you discretion and understanding that when he gives you charge over Israel, you may keep the law of your God. Then you will prosper if you are careful to observe the statutes and the rules that the Lord commanded Moses for Israel. Be strong and courageous. Fear not. Do not be dismayed. With great pains, I have provided for the house of the Lord 100,000 talents of gold, a million talents of silver and bronze and iron beyond weighing. For there is so much of it, timber and stone too, I have provided. To this you must add, you have an abundance of workmen, stone cutters, masons, carpenters, and all kinds of craftsmen without number, skilled in working, gold, silver, bronze, and iron. Arise and work. The Lord be with you. Verse 17. David also commanded all the leaders of Israel to help Solomon his son, saying, Is not the Lord your God with you? And has he not given you peace on every side? For he has delivered the inhabitants of the land into my hand, and the land is subdued before the Lord and his people. Now set your mind and heart to seek the Lord your God. Arise and build the sanctuary of the Lord God, so the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the holy vessel of God may be brought into a house built for the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for that word that you have again spoken through your servant, David, Lord, and, and, and Lord, and through your word, Lord, I pray that, again, you will give us wisdom. You will help us as generations to work together so that the name of the Lord may be passed on. The name of the Lord may be known. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may now be seated. Yung iba sa inyo. Okay na, Pastor. Seated na ako kanina pa. Nakahiga pa nga eh. Okay. But I hope, again, uh, if you have time, read that word. It's, it's so full of, ano, uh, full of um, uh, riches no, in, in, in His word. And we took that word in and, and we want to be able to learn uh, from David. Ang galing nga nito kasi itong, ano na to, this, this uh, account is not just a passing on from one generation to another. In fact, if you look at it, parang ano, it's also a good place to, to understand parenting. 
No? And in fact, when you talk about generations and relationship, ang pinakamagandang focal point is parenting. And speaking of parenting, when I was a young parent, one of the sayings, and I wanted to jump off from this ano, uh, parang sayings or, or quote na nakita ko that really made an impact to the way I parent. No? And, and this was uh, what it says. It says, prepare your child for the path not the path for your child. Now, when I was looking at this adage or this quote, it really made an impact to me because um, even the, my parents, the friends of my parents, my friends and all that, ang mga parents, sobrang concerned talaga sa path ng child nila. Nagpapayaman, uh, talagang uh, influencia, even pagka kinakasal yung mga anak nila, nag invite sila ng mga guests, mga ninong na hindi kilala ng mga anak kasi they're preparing the past. They're preparing connection, they're preparing influence, they're preparing money. Kaya minsan, ang mga parents na mga, kahit na mga, yung mga, katulad ko, let's say Chinese, no? talagang masisipag. Mga parents ko, really honoring them sa sipag nila, providing for us, uh, really love them for doing it. And so they would, but they would spend inordinate time in, in really amassing wealth. And in their minds, and ito, in fairness to the previous generation, I don't know about you, but in fairness to the previous generation, they're doing that because they want to prepare the path for their child. Na para pag yung anak nila, eh, ano na, ready na, ba, okay na, mayaman na, minsan nga, sinasabi pa, huwag kang magpapakasal kung wala ka pang bahay, yung bank account mo, as if yun yung, ano, no, yun yung means or uh, decision points. Pero yun talaga, and ako, if I listen to that, uh, ano naman siya, yung, nakikita ko naman yung heart. Pero alam din natin, that if a child, if only the path is prepared, and the child is not, and the child or, or the next generation is not prepared to receive such blessing, such wealth, pwede silang ma-destroy niyan. Pwede silang ma- masira nung, nung path na prepare mo. At ito pa, pwedeng sila ang sumira nung path. Kahit prepare mo na lahat yan. And that's why when this was told me long time ago, even before I was a parent, na encounter ka to, it really stuck to me. And I said to myself, Lord, sana ako rin. When I prepare my children, I may not be able to amass wealth and you know, limpak-limpak na salapi, pero sana ma-prepare ko sila, sila mismo. Para pag sila ang nagkaroon ng blessing, nagkaroon ng mga anumang path ang i-open ni Lord sa kanila, they have the strength of character. Yung pagkatao nila maayos. So, this really stuck with me. And tama-tama, no? So, parang, ito, nung I wanted, was preparing for this, I was praying for this message, th- this came to mind. And sabi ko nga, parang magandang sabihin na lang natin na, what if, palitan natin yung child, and similarly, we could say, what if we prepare the next generation for the path and not the path for the next generation? No, pwede nating sabihin yon. And ang ganda ng pwedeng-pwedeng gawin to kasi we will take parenting principles also from so yung parenting pala, yung principles ng parenting. Pwede mo pala siya gamitin in raising up the next generation. In fact, hindi lang tayo ang gumag- hindi lang tayo ang gumawa niyan. There is this popular author named Lee Cockrell. Nee, hindi mas ka popular, I think. I mean, I've not really heard of him. I was talking to Andrew a while ago. Yeah, classic yan. I was ang dami kong natutunan kay Andrew. And in, although siyempre si Andrew talagang mas mukhang matanda sa akin, but I want you to know he's one of the next generation uh, leaders na well, he's our leader now, one of our pastors and hopefully you heard his preaching yesterday. Uh, and he talked to me about a book he's reading. Ang title ng book, Creating Magic by Lee Cockrell. And, and itong si Lee Cockrell, yung book na yan, yan makawala na, no? kasi hindi naman natin kailangan mag-focus dyan. Yung book na yan by Lee Cockrell, the, yung magic, uh, Creating Magic, ito yung book about Disney. And how the one who created the culture of Disney took his uh, principles from parenting. Ang galing pala sa Disney, pag ikaw pala, ito, ito isang example, no? pinag-uusapan nga namin kanina ni, ano, ni, ni Andrew. Pagka nag-hire sila, no? 
ang Disney, pag nag-hire sila ng isang employee, automatically ang mindset nila, yung employee na yun, anak nila. Ito sinasabi nila, pag yung employee na nagkaroon ng problema, nagkamali, sabi niya, do you fire your child? Yo, you don't fire your child. What, eh, minsan kahit maling-mali na yung anak mo, I cannot fire Nico. Nico, you're fired! Hindi pwede. But what do we do with our children? Sabi niya, we don't fire our children, we develop them. Kaya pala dun sa Disney, ang mga tao dun, kahit pumapasok silang medyo wanting, develop sila. Believing in them. And developing them. Instead of giving up on them. Ang galing. So, looking at parenting, especially in this case, is a David Solomon story. Ang dami talagang matututunan natin in what David did first. Kaya nga may kita mo, if you would look at this section of scripture I I read, it's a three paragraph long, no? Yung first paragraph niyan, you will notice it is about yung present generation si David. What kind of man was David? What was David? Anong klaseng pagkatao niya? And then how yung pagkatao ni David prepared him so that he could prepare Solomon, the next generation. And that's the second and third um, uh, paragraph. In fact, before I continue, Ang maganda kay David, dito kasi sa, sa, sa quote na to, it's like you have to pick which to prepare, your child or your, the path. Kay David, he prepared both. Possible pala not just to pick and choose the child or the path. Of course, if you have to pick, ito lang sa akin, ha, my opinion is, if you have to pick who to prepare or what to prepare, prepare your child for the path and not the path for your child. Of course. Pero in this scripture, ang galing. Si David, prepare niya yung child, si Solomon, hindi lang yon, prepare niya yung path for him. So if you're a parent, sino mga parent dyan? Pakitype, parent ako, and I love it. Pakitype. Tinatype ba nila? Hindi tayo tutuloy. Parent ako, and I love it. Alright. Tapos, kung sino sa inyo, sino sa inyo? Hindi kayo parent, pero gusto nyo maging parent in the future. Icon kayo ng raise hands. Ganyan, para ako yun. Para, para nandito kayo kasi ilan lang kami nandito. Alam mo, talagang miss na miss ko na kayo. Sana nandito kayo para nag-respond kayo sa akin. So kung wala kayo dito, mag-type man lang kayo. Mas sobrang relax na kahiga. May, siba, may tinapay pa yata. Kinaka- mag-type naman kayo para may response tayo. No? Na, kung gusto mo maging parent, ay, ay, nga pala, nabalitaan ko. Yung ibang Victory Churches natin, like Victory Santa Rosa, nag-start na sila ng limited mass gathering. Tayo, I think, by... Uh, the, oh, so, palakpakan tayo. Talaga nakita ko yung mga pictures nila, no? So, talagang meron na... So, dito siguro, baka later this September or early October. Mag, ano, and again, we will still do online. If you need to stay home, stay home. But for those who want to come, talagang, again, we're excited na na... na, na ano, distract tala, tuloy ako... Kailangan bilisan ko na yung preaching kasi may something is at stake. Atin-atin lang yun. Alright. Yung mga kasama kong generations before me. Na after me. Anyway. Okay. And so, ang galing, no? And so again, I want us to look at this and really, let's take a look at what it took for David to prepare not just Solomon, but the path of Solomon. And ako rin, nung binabasa ko siya, I, I learned so much. And I, it made me check myself also. I said, Lord, para ba ako ni David? Am I doing what's supposed to be done so that the next generation is prepared? So anyway, now let's go to verse 6. It said here, Then he called for Solomon, his son. And what? What did he do? And he charged him. He called for Solomon and charged him. Now, when you say charge him, ang ibig sabihin to command, to command and give full authority, and not just that, and to declare blessing if they obey the command. Ganun yan. So makikita mo lahat yan gagawin ni, ni David. In fact, in some cases, the one who gives the charge not only gives the blessing of obedience to the charge, but even the curse if you don't obey it. Grabe, ganun ta, yung kultura nila dati. The father would take in a child and he would charge the child. Would give a... Kaya ang tinatawag na charge dito, hindi lang to, uh, ano, yung parang nag, nagkwentuhan lang sila. This was a serious matter. 
And the, the reason David did that and charged him to build the house of the Lord, and alam niya na, talag, and makikita mo, i-encourage niya talaga si Solomon. Kasi pag binasa mo yung previous verses, like verse 5, let me just read to you, mabilis lang, no? Sabi dito sa verse 5 ng Second Chronicles then the previous verse, no? Sabi niya, Solomon, my son is young and inexperienced, and the house that is to be built for the Lord must be exceedingly magnificent. So, David understood the magnitude of the mission of God. And alam mo, yung mission natin of advancing God's kingdom, it does not stop with one generation. Masyado siya malaki. It has to be passed on to the next generation. We have to, to as we were charged from the previous, now we take and, and give the charge to the next. And, and really prepare them. And sabi niya, charge him to build a house for the Lord God of Israel. And it says here, David said to Solomon, my son. Now, ito yung kailangan natin. As he took Solomon and charged him, the next few verses will teach us anong pagkatao ng present si David. And I hope we learn from it. First, he said this, my son. So, ang galing, no? Itong word na my son says one thing, that the previous generation took time to have a relationship with the next to call him my son. My son is a, is a uh, intimate, ano. Even in like, hopefully even when we do discipleship, the next generation. Sana, and even si Paul, in the New Testament, I don't know if you notice this, si Paul, when he, when he refers to Timothy, he, re, he refers to Timothy as Timothy, my son. Because that's what it means for the present generation to be able to charge the next generation. Hindi lang to, it's a charge mo siya, no? Parang, oh, gawin mo yan. Tapos walang karele relationship. One way we could bridge the mission is to bridge it through relationship. And so, my son, so hopefully tayo as parents, and I know we're not perfect, David was not perfect. Alam niyo actually, pag binasa niyo, meron tong parallel story sa 2 Samuel 1 Kings. If you read 2 Samuel 1 Kings, the story, masyadong makulay ang story ni David. He's not perfect at all. Sa Chronicles, siyempre yung, ang, ang Chronicles was written in such a way that it, it's a highlight reel. And I'll explain, I don't have time to explain why it's different, no? but talagang, if, if many of you study Leadership 113, malalaman nyo kung bakit. But let me just tell you, no, na David's life was far from perfect. But one thing he did is he uh, reached out to the next generation. He called him my son. And I, alam ko, yung iba sa inyo, tinatanong nyo, parang wala naman ako nakita sa story ng 2 uh, Samuel tsaka 1 Kings about yung relationship ni Solomon tsaka di, mag-antay lang kayo. I'll give you some scriptures that proves that. Pero yun, he called it my son. I had it in what? Ito, ang galing, oh, in my heart. Si previous generation tayo, mga present generation, hopefully, before we charge the next generation, the mission, the purpose of God is in our hearts. We cannot pass anything that's not in our hearts. Kung hindi to totoo sa atin, hindi yan mapapas sa next generation. Wag na tayo magtataka kung yung mga anak natin, yung mga people we are passing things on, kung hindi lang nakukuha yung mga bagay. It's because of us. It's not in our hearts. Mahala tayan if it's not in our heart. And so one of my prayers, even for my family, is that they'll see that this is serious. The kingdom of God is serious. The name of the Lord. In fact, I, my heart to build a house to the name of the Lord. Ano mo tong the name of the Lord? Lagi yan, very prominent yan sa life ni David. In fact, last week, pag pinakinggan mo si um, Paul, how did David fight Goliath? He fought him in the name of the Lord. There's a, and nakakatawa kasi pag tingnan mo yung Lord, capital L-O-R-D, capital L-O-R-D na Lord yan sa Bible nyo, that's Yahweh. That's already the name of the Lord. Para sa, it's the name of the name. And the usage of the, the phrase name of the Lord pala means a constant seeking and devotion of the Lord. Pagka, hindi lang sinasabing the Lord, pero sinasabing the name of the Lord. Pag yan pala ang nakikita mo sa scripture, ang pattern yan, it's descriptive of calling out devotion to the Lord and seeking God. Ganun pala si David. Kaya pala siya nanalo sa giant. 
Kaya pala hindi siya takot kasi he knew the name of the Lord. Bakit si Saul na mas matangkad at mas malakas sa kanya takot sa giant? It's because he did not understand the name of the Lord. He could not call upon the name of the Lord at that time. In fact, at the time of David and Goliath, etong si Saul knew that the Lord has rejected him. Alam, sinabi ni Samuel, so kinakabahan siya na the Lord is not with me, the name of the Lord. Si David, he understood the name of the Lord. And so, ito yung talk about my son, a relationship to the next generation. Having the purpose of God in their heart and having an intimate and relationship with God. Yun yung meron si David. Grabe, hindi pa masyado nagsasalita si David. Ang dami niya nang napasa. I don't know about you. Sasabihin pa lang niya yung mission. Hindi na niya masabing buo dahil napa, yung pagkataon niya na ipasa na niya. All of this tells you about the kind of person David is. And I hope and I pray, and again, not perfect. Far from perfect. Far from perfect. But yung direction. You know, I am not the most relational dad. Alam yan ni na Nico, ni na Elijah. I try to put an effort. Binsan nagtatanong, ano, I, I know sometimes it's awkward. Alam ko about you, di ba? Binsan pag yung parent mo, hindi ka masyado, you know, so biglang nagtanong sa'yo, parang awkward, di ba? Pero I, I went, I go through the awkwardness and to yung anak ko, no, parang alam niya, iniisip ko, pagkausap ko siya. Mas ka nga muna dito. <laughs> Ikaw yung pinag-uusapan eh. So pag kinakausap ko sila, I really fight through the awkwardness minsan because I just simply want to build a bridge. To be able to call them my son. Actually, sila yung naiilang pagka niyayakap ko sila. Tsaka, oh, awkward, no? Anyway, moving on. My son, and I, in my heart, to build a house, no? Ang ganda ng ano ni David. And sana habang binabasa natin to, we're saying to ourselves, wow, this is the kind of present generation I want to be for the next. Moving on, sabi niya, I want it, I want, uh, it's in my heart to do this. But look at this. But the word of the Lord came to me. Wow. Now, alam ko yung iba sa inyo. Ano ibig sabihin yun? Yung meron bang word na lumapit kay David? Uh, oh, ibig sabihin namin the word of the Lord. May Bible ba biglang sumampal sa kanya? Nung isang, uh, na, yun ba yun? Actually, if you would read every one of this and also look at the reference in 2 Samuel, and not only to David, but every other king, most of, most kings, Ang ibig sabihin lagi, pag meron siyang, but the word of the Lord came to me, it's normally a prophet that God sends to walk side by side with the king. In this, this case, it's Nathan. I don't know about you, but one of the key relationship of a king at that time, when they're ruling, is a prophet beside them. If you would look at the different books of the prophet here, you would see them walking in the corridors of power and God uses them as an oracle. No? Hindi, pa na, hindi pa na puput into paper lahat ito and they were the ones being used by God to speak into the life of the king. And so, one thing I want the present generation, us, including me, to understand is for us to be a generation that will be able to prepare the next. First, we have to be a, a people who would relate to them. My son, calling them my son, my daughter. We have, to be, have, we have to have it in our heart to do the things of God, His purpose, His mission. And, and we have to be a people who's willing to, uh, 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 let me see, uh, to, to talk about the name of the Lord, having an intimate relationship with Him. And here we see, but the word of the Lord came to me. Alam mo yung next, na importante sa mga present generation, na katulad ni David meron siya, he had key relationships. Ano, ano yung key relationships? He had people who could speak into his life. In fact, Nathan was the one who spoke to him against when him again when he sinned. Grabe key relationships importante na. Of course, may relationship ka kay God. Si David was a a musician. He worshiped God. He understood the name of the Lord. But kahit ganon, meron siyang key relationships, people around him that could speak the word of God to him. You know what happened to Saul? The opposite. Samuel was the one, the last judge and prophet who was beside Saul. But Saul got angry with him. In fact, there was a scripture in, in, in Samuel where, where it says that Samuel, until the day Saul died, did not meet with him anymore. Since Saul lost his key relationship, people who God brought into his life to speak the word. Question today for all of us, 
present generation is this. Do we have key relationship? I'm so glad that I'm in this church and I have key relationships. I have key relationships in, 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 in my friends like Pastor Richie, Pastor Ado. I have key relationships, people, le- leaders speaking to my life. I have my victory group. Ayan na. May plugging na naman tayo. Yung iba dito, nako na isingit na naman yung victory group. I was just uh, meeting with, uh, I was just, uh, when I meet with my uh, yeah, victory group, I talk to them about, about key relationships. And so, wow, ito pala yun. But the word of the Lord came. And I don't know about you, no? Isn't it that there were times when binasa mo na yung Bible, nagpray ka na, pero it took someone to say the same thing. Sinabi na ni Lord, ayaw mo makinig. Pero nung sinabi na nung tao, minsan repetition eh. Word ni God, prayer, may sense ka, tas may taong darating sa sabihin sa'yo. And all of these are important to make us the person, the kind of person we should be if we're going to prepare the next generation. And so it says, but the word of the Lord came. He said, you have shed much blood and have waged great wars. You shall not build a house to my name. So this one was spoken by, by uh, Nathan. He also begins to say, behold, a son shall be born to you. So, even sa word ni Lord, pag nakikinig tayo mabuti, there is something in store for the next generation. Behold, a son. So, he was telling Solomon, God told me, and I want to pass it on to you. A, sh- a-, a-, a son shall be born, and-, and you shall be a man to you who shall be a man of rest. I will give him rest from all his enemy, for his name will be, ano pangalan niya? Solomon, which is a play on word, on the word shalom, which means peace. Grabe, yung pangalan ni Solomon was a destiny. Kaya minsan, pag, pag alam mo, ito, ito lang sa, this is just me, and I don't want to make this too mystical, pero sometimes when I think about my children and their trajectory in life, I think about their name. Sabi ko, God, bakit ito yung binigay mong, why did you set it in my heart to name Nico, Nicholas Ezekiel? What is it? It helps. Napapaisip ako. And again, I just, I'm just saying that. And when I was reading this, I go, kaya pala ganun na ako minsan mag-isip. I'm, I'm looking at my daughter. Uh, actually, about a week ago, Nathania asked me, Sabi niya, Dad, why did you name me Nathania? Sabi ko, well, because Nathan, uh, Nathania is from the word Nathan or Jonathan, which means a gift from God. So, you're a gift of God. Yeah, Nathan, yeah. Tawa ng tawa. So, man. Okay din pala yung joke ko sa mga anak ko. Nathania. A gift of God. Yeah? Yeah. And so, when I... <laughs> tawa-tawa kayo dyan. Punta na nga kayo dito para dito tayo magtawanan. Anyway, so even the name. Grabe, no? And so Solomon. Minsan di mo alam, pinangalanan mo yung anak mong ganyan. Yung pala, yun pala yung trajectory niya sa buhay. Grabe, nung pinabasa ko to, it reminded me. And the conversation, I was not even looking much at this when Nathania talked to me. And it made me think. He even asked, why did you name Kuya like this, Elijah? And so I talked to them about the, the meaning of their name, which is the strength of the saints. Having strength. Si yung Nicholas, Nicole, or Nicole. Lahat sila may ganong klase. Anyway, napunta na sa pamilya ko. Sorry, erase, erase, erase. Oh, hindi yon. But I'm, it's so, kasi nung, when I was preparing for this, sobrang overlap yung parenting. Tsaka looking at the next generation and, and, and taking care of them. And, and ang galing nga dito eh. By preparing Solomon, he was able to move the kingdom of Israel forward. Tayo naman by preparing the next generation, it's the kingdom of God. No? Through the church, through discipleship. Anyway, let me move on. And then he said, He shall build a house for my name. He shall be my son, and I will be his father. So that's an assurance from God that I will be as I am with you, David. I will be with Solomon. So he encourages Solomon. Ibig sabihin, David was a man of God and of his word. Biro mo, anong pinapasa niya kay Solomon? The word of God. Wow, grabe. Pagkatao pa lang ni David, tapos na pwede na tayo. Let's pray. Actually, marami pa to. 
Pero dito pa lang, yung pagkatao pa lang, how we are with our walk with God, with our relationship with them, already speaks volumes of what we can pass on to the next generation. And then it says here, now my son, verse 11. Now, of course, if you look at verse 11, ito na yung second paragraph. This is the start of the second paragraph. So kanina, the first paragraph, we're talking about us as the present generation. Now, let's take a look at how David prepared Solomon naman. Ito na yung paragraph na to, second and third. So let's take a look at that. So again, sa first part ng, ng paragraph na to, David prepared the person. He prepared the child. The latter part of this paragraph and the next, David prepared the path. Galing, no? He prepared the child, the person. He prepared the path. Let's take a look. Verse 11, Now, my son, the Lord be with you so that you may succeed in building the house of the Lord your God. Anong sabi niya una? Ano, ang galing talaga, no? He prepared him. He prepared the personhood of Solomon by saying, the Lord be with you. Being conscious of the presence of God. Sabi niya, ito, ito ipapasa ko sa'yo. Be prepared. The Lord be with you. The presence of God be with you. You know, minsan, I, I don't know about you, but often, more often than not, we do things and we forget, forget about the presence of God. We forget about God's, uh, that God is with us. Minsan, pag nagpreparing ako ng preaching, I have to remind myself, have I prayed? Have I prayed? Have I sought the presence of God? Kasi it's easily... We easily forget it, we, especially pag we start achieving. But you know what David said? Hindi niya agad binigyan ng kung ano nung magagarap. The presence of the Lord be with you. Be always conscious of His presence. That's how we prepare the next generation. Long after we're gone, listen, parents, long after we're gone, mamamatay din tayo. Long after we're gone, it's the presence of God who's going to be with our children. Like what sinasabi, I do not teach my children to be independent. Kasi, oh, parenting, kailangan you teach your children to be independent. No! I don't teach my children to be independent. I teach my children to shift dependence. Ulitin ko, shift dependence. Dati dependence sa akin, nung baby pa lang sila, bata pa, pinalaki ko. Pero now na malaki na si, sila, like si Nico, sa harap, sa harap ko kasi si Nico eh. Now that they're big, Kahit bukas kunin ako ni Lord. Or mamya. Mabubuhay ng maayos si Nico. Yan ang hope ko lagi. Yan ang pinagpe-pray ko. Bata pa si Nico, marami pa pwede mangyari. Pero yan ang hope ko. Bakit? Kasi kahit wala na ako, naka-shift na independence na hindi sa akin. Pero kay Lord. That's what, I, we, that's what we teach our children. We don't teach them independence. We teach them to shift their dependence from you to the Lord. The Lord be with you so that you may succeed in building the house of the Lord your God. And yung blessing, no? If you, I charge you. I mean, the Lord be with you so that you may succeed. Blessing yan. You, if the Lord is with you, you will succeed. As he has spoken concerning you. Ang galing talaga ni, ano, no, ni David. As he has spoken concerning you. David was so much listening. Always inquiring of God. God, ano ba yung ginagawa mo? Ano ba yung agenda mo sa anak ko? Ang, mag- ma- ang parents kasi minsan. And ito ah, in fairness to us as parents. Alam naman natin, gusto natin ang best para. Meron ba ditong parent? Pagising mo sa, oh Lord, sana, sana masira buhay ng anak ko. May ganun ba dito? Wala. Lahat tayo gusto maayos yung anak natin. Pero ito yung problema. Sa sobrang gusto nating umayos, aba, kung magplano tayo, para na tayo sigad sa buhay nila. Dito sinabi niya, as he has spoken concerning you. You know what that means? That David was concerned about the agenda of God in the life of their child, not his agenda. Now, of course, minsan pagkausap ko si Nico, si Elijah, I'll give them advice. Pero ultimately, Ano ba ginagawa ni God sa buhay mo? And ako, pinagpe-pray ko kay God, God, pwede ko bang, pwede mo ako bigyan ng sneak peek ng gusto mo sa buhay nila para ako tumulong ako doon. Lord, what is your agenda? And help me, help me make that agenda come true. And that's not just true with the people that you, ano, my child. That's true with the people we are given the privilege to disciple. And again, di natin sila disciple. Disciple sila ni Lord. Tayo lang yung tumutulong sa kanila. 
and my biggest agenda, everyone I have had the privilege to be a small part of their life in discipling them. I always ask God, God, ano bang agenda mo sa buhay ni Paul? Hindi agenda ko sa buhay niya, or Paul, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to harm you. Eh kung ako yun, talagang ma-harm siya. Sorry na lang. Kulang. Kung plano ko lang sa anak ko, mako, delikado. Pero, kung ang prayer natin kay God is, Lord, ano ba ang plano mo sa buhay ng anak ko? Help me. Help me understand your agenda. And with your permission, can I humbly join you in your agenda for my child? In, my, in your agenda for the, that disciple? Okay lang ba yun? Can, can we do that for the people with disciples? Hindi tayo si Lord. Ewan ko lang kung tingin nyo si Lord. Tingnan, pakitingnan nga, pakicheck yung kamay. May butas ba? Wala, wala. Okay, so hindi tayo si Lord. Pakicheck. Okay. Alright. Galing, no? Grabe. Talo na yata ako dun sa pinag-usapan natin. Okay. Lumagpas na ako. Right, let's go. Uh, we'll do this. Pero do you see how we prepare the next generation, the person of the next generation? Grabe talaga. Let's continue. Only may the Lord grant you discretion and understanding. Grabe talaga. Discretion and may you keep the law of the Lord, your God. Hindi lang enough na may presence. Okay na may presence si God. Okay may agenda ni God. Pero alam mo ang charge sa kanya. Oh, but, but make sure you have discretion. Make sure you have understanding. And keep the law of your God. Yan yung mga nakuha, yan yung mga ipinasa ni David sa kanya. Pero pag ito yung tatanong nyo, eh pastor, binabasa ko naman yung Samuel. Wala naman ako nakitang parenting moment between Solomon and David. Really? Can we hear what Solomon has to say? Now, Solomon wrote a book titled Proverbs. In, in, in Proverbs, the theme of Proverbs is a father instructing a son. And this is what he has to say. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 3 to 4. When I was a son with my father. O si Solomon na nagpapatotoo nito. Siya yung nagtetestify. When I was a son with my father, tender, and my father. Ma- Mangya ba? Ako ang paborito ng anak ko. Bakit? Ako yung only son. Baka lang. Okay, sige. Mayabang eh. Ako, ako yung paborito ng nanay ko, di ba? He taught me and said to me, let your heart hold fast my words, keep my commandments and live. And you know, all throughout, eh, nabasa na ba yung Proverbs? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, the knowledge of the Holy One, discernment, wisdom. Ano yun? Ano yun? Yun yung previous verse, discretion, understanding, the law of God. Yun pala yung pinasa ni David. Grabe, no? Pag, ang galing nung... I have to continue. Pero ang galing ng word ni God. Grabe talaga when you study it. And that's what he, he, he prepared the next generation. And then he blessed him. Sabi ito yung blessing sa'yo. Then you will prosper if you care, you're careful to observe. Sabi niya, tinuro ko na lahat sa'yo. Ipinasa ko sa'yo. Be careful so that you will prosper. Observe the statutes, the rules that the Lord commanded Moses of Israel. Tapos ito yung mga importante. Okay? After niya, sinabi lahat yon, in-admonish niya, in-encourage niya. Kasi siyempre, mamamatay na siya. Sabi niya, okay, hindi ibig sabihin may word ka ni Lord, hindi ibig sabihin may discretion and understanding ka, walang challenge. So be strong. Be, whoa, be strong. Do you know what be strong means? Be strong, do not yield. Do not quit. Huh? Sabi niya, be strong. Tapos sabi niya, after be strong, be courageous. Be courageous means do not compromise. Do not go to the left nor to the right. Once you know the word of the Lord, what you've written, seen the law of God, be courageous because there will be others there who will try to make you compromise, make you go to the left. Be courageous. Be strong. Do not quit. Do not yield. Fear not. Don't afraid. Parang mali yata English ko, no? Don't be afraid. 
Don't be anxious. God is in control. You know the word afraid and anxiety, they're related wherein you are so much, uh, you're, you're caught up with things you cannot control. No, you have a God who is in control. Don't be afraid. Ginawa ko itong mabuti, hindi ko nakukuha yung results. Don't be afraid. Don't be anxious. God is in control. And do not be dismayed or do not be distressed or depressed. Kasi minsan, hindi lahat ng resulta makukuha mo agad. Do not be dismayed. You know the word dismay means, kaya ka nadidepress minsan, kasi dismay means this. The word may, this means negation. May means the possibility of. Pag feeling mo, wala na yung possibility of you succeeding or possibility of you doing this, doing that. Pag na-negate yun, nadidepress ka. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng dismay. Is there anything in your life you feel like you have lost the possibility of happening in your life? The Bible says, do not be dismayed. Galing, no? And yan ang pinasa niya sa next generation. Kasi alam nyo, the next generation, maraming dadaanan niya, maraming giants yan, dilang gulayas, and there's so many things that they will face. What will we pass on to them? So let me just go quickly. With great things. Ito pa, after he provided, he prepared the person, he, provided, he prepared the path. First, he prepared provision. He provided. Provision. 100,000 talents of gold. Grabe, kung ano yung kailangan. The vision is big. Kaya dito sa movement natin, we prepare what we need to prepare so that the next generation could succeed. All the resources we could possibly give them. Now, alam mo, kapag tatay ka or nanay ka, minsan, when I look at my children, ano kaya pwedeng ibigay ko sa kanya? Sabi ko sa kanya, well, sabi ko sa mga anak ko, I'll make sure, hopefully, by the grace of God, I can get you educated. I can, I can teach you how to, th- the resources I may not be able to give you and hand to you. I hope and pray I'll be able to teach you how to obtain it in a godly manner. Provision. I hope we have the help them to give the ability to to obtain what needs to be obtained. Provision. I, we do not just give them fish, but we teach them how to fish. Continuing, you have an abundance of workmen. So, grabe yung resources na binigay niya. Hindi lang hindi lang resources na material, but but even even me, uh, human resource. Grabe talaga si David. Napakayama, napaka influential. But the next thing that he niya, not just provision, let's go faster. Uh, sabi niya, in verse 17, the last paragraph, we're about to end. David also commanded. The word commanded is the same Hebrew word as the word charge. Parehong pareho. He charged Solomon, he charged the people. You know what he did? He charged all the leaders of Israel. You know what he did? He did not just pass on provision. He passed on power. In this movement, I'm glad people empowered me. Hindi pa sila patay, pero in-empower na nila kami. Dito, dito, ito. You know what we do? Hindi pa naman kami patay, di ba? So we don't pass on. We, we loan them. We loan them our influence. We, we endorse them. So when Paul comes up here, man, alam ko minsan, Diba no, Paul? Nagtatawanan tayo minsan. Diba? Wrong gramming. Pero pinagtatawanan lang namin din. Next time, mas magaling ka na. Punta ka pa rin dito. Minsan, dati pa si Paul. Pag Dahil naalala mo, ganun si Paul mag-preach. Oh. Pag nagsasalita. Ilagay mo lang to dito, tsaka to. Just got lucky na. O eto, tsaka dito, tsaka ganun. Ganun si Paul mag-preach dati. Ngayon, hindi na. Ganyan siya. So, lumili, lumiliit na yung yug-yug. Nakita niyo yung improvement? Man, but I was listening to him. I mean, tatawa kayo ng tao dyan. I was listening to him. Grabe yung improvement, yung flow. Grabe. And I was also listening to Eric Alarcon. Para ba, two weeks ago, grabe. Man, the improvement. Why? We want to empower them. We, we don't just want to, uh, sige, dyan ka na. And we want, if you feel like this is the spiritual family for you, Man, join kayo. Empower natin sila. Huwag agad na. Ay, si Paul magbe-preach. Off. Sakit, oh. Huwag naman ganun. 
off lang para na. <laughs> soft de <laughs> di ba magin ka dami ko natutunan last week kay Paul eh. I was listening to Eric when when he was uh, talking about the vine di ba I mean grabe daming pwedeng matutunan because we want to pass them we also want to pass on the platform so it's not just the person but the path and you know why why we do this because of this at the end of it in verse 19 at the end this is what david's concern was for the name of the lord yun lang naman ang yun lang naman ang importante dito napansin niyo ba yun ang importante David started the charge with saying the name of the Lord. He ended the charge saying the name of the Lord. Because this is for the honor of God. For His name to be known in all the earth. And not just in all the earth, not, but to the next generation. So you know what we do? We also rally this present generation to support the next generation. Rally ko kayo. Hey, lahat tayo present. Support natin. For the name of the Lord. Bakit ulit? Is it the name of victory? The name of ENC? No. It's the name of the Lord. That's simply what we're, everything we're doing, everything you're about to participate in is because of the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, today, thank you for giving us the opportunity to be a part of what you're doing. To be a generation who will be able to pass on to the next that, and help us to be a generation whose heart is for you and your mission, who has a relationship with you and the next generation, that we may be able to prepare them as a people, as a person, one by one. We could prepare them as a person. We could prepare them, Lord. And we could prepare provisions for them, the path for them, whether that be provision, whether that be power or influence. A platform, Lord, help us, Lord, to be able to prepare them for the future. So, Lord, help them to pre- 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 help us to prepare the next generation, the person, Lord, the provision and the platform, so that they may be able to continue to spread the name of the Lord, to make known the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. And amen. Praise God. So, again, before we go, alam ko yung iba sa inyo, baka biglang, wag muna kayo mag-off, kunin nyo muna yung lunch nyo, dalhin nyo sa harap ng, ng cameras nyo. Again, we, we do not just talk about these things. We want everyone to be participating in this. And one of our biggest expression, tama ba ako, yung big expression natin of, the, of uh, reaching out to the next generation is through our Every Nation Campus Ministry. Now, marami yan. May kids church tayo, may real life, pero ngayon, one of our mission field is the campus. So, yung mga campus missionary, quickly, samahan nyo ako dito. Iurong natin ito. Masyado uh, mabigat, baka mahulog ko. And we just want to take this quick moment to help you participate in this. I know many of you, and on behalf of the leadership, I know many of you have already participated in this. You're giving, you are volunteering, you are praying, so you're praying, giving, or going to the campuses. But I, again, I just want to commend all of them. Dati ako rin tumatayo dito. Alam ko, mas mo, ayan, ito, acceptable na si Chrissy ngayon. You are now accepted in the beloved. For those of you who don't know this, naka blue yan last week. Kamonte ko nang hindi papasukin dito. Pero siyempre, mahal natin lahat, no? Anyway, so again, I wanted to have them up here. Our campus missionaries are people just like me long time ago. I mean, I mean, not so long ago. No, I was also a campus missionary in the same campus as they're in right now. And I also uh, raise my own support just like them, MPD. I know what, what we go through, what we go through. And so, really, if God uh, speaks to you about it and you want to be a part of that, there's a QR code. Tama ba ako? Uh, no, there's a QR code. And you can fill up a Google Sheet so that you could be a part of really supporting them, not just by being a volunteer, but actually financially supporting them. And I know... Uh, if, if God places in your heart, He will also give the provision for such. And so, again, thank you, uh, many of them. Ito, it's the Malate Pasay Bunch, no? Pero, Pasay, 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 Pasay. Wag na, wag na natin. De, 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 kasama ka. Kas- Sorry po. 
Pastor Andrew, sorry, Pastor Andrew. <laughs> Para si Chrissy last week pa, no? And of course, Shirley kanina. And so I really want to take this time to pray for them. Please pray with me, uh, w- with them. And hopefully, if God places it in your heart to support them, please do so, okay? So with that said, let me just pray. Father, we thank you for each and every one of our campus missionary, even si Shirley kanina, si na Chams, na nasa bahay. Uh, taking care of uh, their family and even uh, Sina Ven, Sa Kabila, Sina Enrico. Lord, all of them, uh, Lord, we pray, God, that because of their labor, many of the next generation would know the name of the Lord. That the name of the Lord may be praised, that the name of the Lord may be known. So thank you, Lord, that you will really indeed bless them. Why? Because they will be a blessing. This we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, campus missionaries. Natalo ako today. And so, uh, atin-atin lang kung bata ko natalo. And uh, again, uh, we just ended our series on generationship. But this is just the end of the series. We continue on the mission and reaching the next generation with, through a 